And we're live. Heavens. Get live. Heavens. Welcome to the podcast. My name's Skip Clark, Skip Happens podcast host, along with Skip Happens podcast co-host, Deb Lampier, president and founder of the official country music fan club. This is the podcast that will bring you the stories. We will interview the incredible up and coming artists out of Music City. Also, we chat with the big stars and we talk about their journey to stardom. We also love talking to entrepreneurs. Not only that, it's people like you and I. That's all. And just remember, skip happens. So get over it. Let's get right to the podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's been a What's long, up, not much. It's been a long time. AJ Sanders joining us here tonight. How are y'all? Yeah, Welcome. but it's been a long time since Deb and I have actually gone on with uh, with Skip Happens. We had the holidays and all that, and uh, just starting to get back into it a little bit. But uh, AJ Sanders is hanging with me. AJ, last time, uh, we were just talking without the mics on. I think it's been about a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were trying to get caught up, and uh, actually, that's when you could visit the radio stations and visit the programmers. Yeah. And and make new friends along the way. We had you over at the uh, pod zone here. Actually, mm -hmm. you're sitting, I think, right here next to me when we did that. We were, dude, wasn't there a, uh, there was a football game or something. We had wings yeah. and pizza or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, we, oh yeah, the guest comes oh. over, man. Anybody that comes to the pod zone, we don't tell Deb this, but <laughs> anybody else that comes to the pod zone, you get beer, you get wings, you get mm -hmm. pizza. And I think we did, we should, we had a beer and we had yeah. some pizza and, I think there's a ball game on in the family room afterwards. I was gonna say, it wasn't the Super Bowl, but let me think. Yeah, something was, was it college? I think it was the college bowl games last yeah, year. Yeah, because I think, think maybe it was about this time because last night we just had uh, what we had Bama and Ohio State, mm -hmm. and uh, of course Alabama kicked ass. So, and that was that was a massacre. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I, was, I was actually shooting a YouTube video, which didn't turn out well because it wasn't an exciting game at all. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. watched that game until it became a blowout. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah. and who would have thought? Who would have thought? But. Man. You know what? Now we're cheering for the Bills. So yeah, yeah. Yes. In the Northeast, it's our neck of the woods, and uh, now they play the Ravens. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. I and, think the final four, I think my prediction last night was, uh, let me think, I was going to go with Green Bay, okay. Bills, um, the Chiefs, and then, dude, I'm like a split decision between Saints <laughs> and Bucks. <laughs> wow. Split, wow. dude. Dude. I, I just think the Bills, this is going to be their year. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're going to talk about music here in a minute, but Josh Allen, the kid is 24 years old. He's on a rookie contract. Uh, this kid is kicking ass. There's no doubt. Good. About it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. The, the mm -hmm. kid is on fire. He's got a future right now as long as he stays healthy and uh, just keeps doing what he's doing. He's yeah. got nowhere to go but up, and he's going to go mm -hmm. up quite a bit. But uh, A.J. Sanders, welcome. And tell, talking about sports, you are a former professional golfer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could yeah. drive the ball. Uh, yeah, I, I hit it a pretty long ways, man. Do you still get out and play? You, you know what's funny is actually, uh, what was it? Probably two or three months ago, kind of when the quarantine was going down. Yeah. Um, my dad calls me and goes, hey, man, are you going to, you think you could come back to town? I was like, I don't know. Just so happened, I, uh, I, I want to say it was Thanksgiving. I had a couple of shows to play. I was like, yeah, I'll be down. Um, he said, well, they've got a skins match, like a $100 skins match. And the way that the format works is uh -huh. any two tie, all tie for that hole. And, you know, you play 18 holes. And we had 30 or 40 people out there playing <laughs> and ended up, long story short, the only skins available for the day were number one, number two, mm -hmm number four, five, and then like number seven and 11. The last group to come in cut every hole out except for five and seven, and I have oh, one of them. So me and a buddy of mine ended up splitting like three grand. No. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So yeah, that, my, that. my weekend turned into like a huge payday with the gigs <laughs> going on. Yeah. I love that. Well, so you still do. I mean, that's, you know, you've got that past and mm -hmm. uh, it's something you can stay with. But uh, now you're putting out great music. I know last time we talked, you had Chevy and Daddy coming out. And I think mm -hmm. that you're doing that radio tour. But, uh, you know, a whole lot has happened since then. Your hair has gotten longer. I uh, have. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I know. Dude. It Real. was about three inches longer. Really? We'll talk about that here in a minute. But first of all, de describe. <laughs> Deb's going to say, all right, Skip, shut up. Uh, describe your problems. Where are you? And uh, 
t- tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm in Nashville. I've kind of been back and forth between my hometown of Hartsville, South Carolina, and Nashville, but I've been in Nashville the whole time. Um, dude, the rules have been back and forth with venues or going out or even eating. Like, I, I remember complaining a couple months back that everything, if you didn't get something to eat, no matter if it was fast food or what, it was shut down by 9 o'clock. That's crazy. So, mm-hmm. But, I mean, everything's kind of – for the most part, open back up the most it can be. And, you know, thank so, God the people are getting to play again in the bars. Are you able to get out and play? Yeah, I, I don't play here as much. Um, right. A lot of the things around here, you know, it's a lot of free free shows that you have to play mm-hmm. for the for the exposure. But um, for the most part, I've been going back home and playing some smaller gigs. Now, you were from that. You said what town in uh, South Carolina or was yeah. it North? Hartsville, South Carolina. Which was, isn't that pretty close to the ocean, if I remember correctly or not? Yeah, it's about mm. an hour and a half, two hours from Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yep. So when you get home, uh, the rules, uh, wearing the mask and all that, you obviously have to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but going out, at least you can go out, but uh, maybe limited capacity. Is that the deal? Yeah. Um, I've played a couple shows that were 50% capacity. Yeah. Um Every show I've played, it's if you're sitting down, mask on, it, or mask off. If you get mm-hmm. up, that's when they'd like you to have the mask on. Um, right, right. We, uh, I've, I've enjoyed actually playing the smaller gigs again, man. It's it's fun because it's a lot more personal. Mm-hmm. You're so mm-hmm. much closer to everyone. You're almost eye level with everybody, and it's uh, it's that's kind of my element. I like doing the storytelling stuff. So yeah. it's a little more personal that way too. Yeah. I think people yeah. can relate. They feel like they're a part of your life. They feel like mm-hmm. they can really get to know you. And mm-hmm. I don't know, to me, yeah. that kind of really builds a, a solid fan when mm-hmm. you're working in that arena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. So uh, with this whole <laughs> pandemic thing mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I know you weren't able to get out and play for a little bit. It's good to have you back out there a little bit, but uh what were you doing? Were you doing a lot of writing? Were you, oh, man, I dude, learned I, some things? I, I did a ton of writing. Um, I didn't finish as much stuff as I wanted to on the writing end, but we were, we were so far into getting these new songs and stuff out. Um, like right here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really pulling a lot of weight on making sure everything was set up on YouTube, making sure everything was, was correct on, the Facebook end and stuff like that. So um, I was concentrating more on that side than I should have with the, uh, with the writing. I should have really been a lot more into the writing than I was, but um, I've got a lot of ideas that are, that are about to come to life, I guess you could say. Yeah. I can't wait to see and hear them. Mm-hmm. I know we were talking a little bit, but it's all, you know, we got to be careful. Yeah. And, yeah. I, mean, I totally get that, dude. You got your thing going for you. Yeah, I totally man. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I tell you what, I was actually, uh, I told my parents the other week, I said, man, it's, it's hard to, to keep a positive attitude with everything that's been going on. But, you know, I don't know if you know this, but like, I'm going through divorce. I kind of figured I wasn't going to go there, but now yeah. it's get- I'm going through a divorce. Um, you know, that, that started right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I had that stress going on, then the pandemic, and then, you know, trying to get music out, not being able to play. You know, it was, it was one of those things where I would stay up at five or six o'clock in the morning and know that I needed to do things, but I wasn't able to do things social media wise or anything because you couldn't, you just couldn't do anything. Yeah. It was, it was a crazy time, but. You know, Looking forward to this year for sure. Yeah, and let's just hope things turn around. I mean, so far we're only a few weeks into it. Nothing's yeah. much really different right now. Man. But uh, I think uh, I think Deb and I can see that it's it's starting to change a little bit, and we're hoping mm-hmm. to at least be able to go out and see some yeah. of the artists and have some of the artists like yourself come through town and uh, mm-hmm. you know maybe do a show or two. So that'd be cool. But uh, yeah. yeah, I kind of figured. You know, I see the pictures of you and your daughter, mm-hmm. and um, I got to tell you, it's, they just warm my heart because hey, she's the best, man. Yeah, there's something about kids and being able to spend that time with them, and that that obviously is a priority in your life mm-hmm. right now. And yeah. and I can just tell by the pictures. Yeah, 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 absolutely wonderful, my friend. How old is she? She's uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Mm-hmm. And is she yet, like, uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of it, but is she aware that mommy and daddy are in this situation? And- um, yeah, I, I can kind of tell now, but she's, you know, she's really young. She's, uh, she's definitely in the schedule where she knows when it's about time to go to her mom's. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I'm sure that she probably does the same thing with me. But, uh, you know, normally it, we've got a 50-50 split right now with everything. Uh, and it's yeah. it's going good. So, I mean, it's as, good far as, go. as far as stress with her, I can't tell a lot of stress with her. But, awesome. yeah. Just always well, hard. here's the thing. She's young, and when they're yeah. young, they just adapt to whatever's going on in their environment. Yeah. So she'll just grow right into it. I don't yeah. think it's it yeah, just becomes sure. a way of life. So no and stress. They, yeah, definitely <laughs> really right. I got three daughters from my previous, and my youngest daughter was the easiest, and she was only two, three. I I forgot what it right. so go, but there was no problem, no problem at all. She yeah. knows who dad is, loves dad, knows who mom is, loves mom, and mm -hmm. life goes on. Yeah. So. And I, mm -hmm. I've told a lot of people, you know, kind of going back to the the stuff about posting about my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I'm really adamant about is even though that that we've had our differences um, and it didn't work out, um, the way I look at it is, and I, I stand firm by this, and I think everyone should do this, is I can't expect my daughter to fully respect me as a father or a parent if I don't respect her mother. Exactly. Um, and I've been very adamant that if people ask about her, you know, I, I'm as honest as it can be, or I'll just say, I don't want to talk about that, blah, blah, blah. But, um, exactly. you know, at the end of the day, I think that, that making sure that she just like Christmas time, for instance, when, you know, I had her on Christmas and um, we made an agreement that she would get her a day early. So her and her family mm -hmm. could, enjoy some time with her and you know i made it a thing that she i know she's getting a present from her mom over there but for me and her to give her one so mm -hmm. when her mom showed up to pick her up she had a present ready to give her and stuff like that Aww, that's, that's awesome. nice that's, that's really awesome. nice see that uh, makes you such a great guy yeah. So, you know i just you know i wish i i wish everybody was like that yeah yeah well yeah. you know like i said some people didn't you know i had, I had great guidance with my parents thank yeah. god mm -hmm. um and Again, going back to the social media thing, there's there's a lot of people out there that are not fortunate enough to have a father figure in their life. And, you know, whether people want to believe it or not, I get those messages. You know, the new form of fan mail is now those DMs. Mm -hmm. And when someone DMs me and says, man, I wish I had a father like you or blah, 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 you know, something like, well, not saying that I am a, a father figure for him, but I could at least set an example on maybe mm -hmm. guiding them on what should happen. Exactly. You know, I hope mm -hmm. at least. Exactly. Well, we're, we're proud of you in the, for thinking the way that you think and you're handling the situation really well. Let's uh, let's get away from that a little bit. And, talk oh, yeah, yeah. Music. and, and right now we were playing that before uh, Deb and I, before you actually hopped on here tonight, mm -hmm. I had it cranked and I was like singing along and, and Deb was like making fun of me. I go, dude, I, I said, this song's a hit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I did not hear it until tonight. Really? Really? Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, I had no idea because obviously you're not working with anybody right now that, yeah. you know, sending it to me or calling me about it, but uh, yeah. I thought it's one of your latest what about three months ago, I think it was mm -hmm. posted on, uh, on YouTube, but I played it and I went, damn, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is good. Chevy and daddy was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and Chevy and daddy is crazy. Chevy and daddy's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I, oh I, my what, God. You have like, years. a yeah, a bazillion hits on on Spotify. Your music mm -hmm. has got so many. You've got yeah. a lot of streams. I've gotten lucky, man. And you know, right now I'm kind of concentrating on the content end mm -hmm. rather than the music. So, like YouTube, I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm going to start doing like blogs. Like I'm about to edit one now, but mm -hmm. each week I'm going to do a vlog for all 52 weeks of the year oh. um, of different stuff. And one of the things I was going to do is reveal how I did Chevy and Daddy, how I got it to go viral for free. Because it did happen, man. It, it, we didn't pay for that promotion or anything. I, I just think that's hard to believe, but I do believe you. And mm -hmm. it's that's amazing because everybody wants to have their fair share, get their hand in the pot somehow and mm -hmm. do whatever they got to do. But uh, for you to be able to do that, know how to do it and do it right is yeah. amazing. And there's probably a lot of independent artists like yourself that, you know, that they're spending thousands thousands mm -hmm. of dollars to get their music yeah. out yeah i'll tell yeah. you dude i'll tell you this uh it eventually for the the listeners out there if they want to kind of see how i did it i will be putting a video out on youtube on what i did mm -hmm. not saying that it's gonna do the same for you like i had a niche i had uh, a sentimental song that dealt with chevrolet trucks 
so mm-hmm. that I had specific target areas that I could reach out to people for. But so, what I, I will say this, when you get back to the, the pricing, I sat down with a, uh, a promotion team for Spotify playlisting and stuff. And mm-hmm. they went through the, uh, the statistics. And if you look at my statistics, it always shows you organic reach and your paid reach. The organic reach at the time was like 6 million people or something like that. And it had like 30,000 shares. And they said, you know, how, how in the world did you do this? I said, well, yeah. I, I did this and that, this and that. They said, well, we could tell you didn't pay anything because you can't pay for 30,000 shares. You can pay for millions of views, but you can't pay people to share it. Right. And so that was one thing. And they said, uh, they said, what was your, what was your Facebook audience before that video? And I said, I had like, 2000 followers something like that and mm-hmm. at the time it was at like 12,000 and they said well i'm just going to let you know you know this this group that we were talking about working with they said we we've got an artist that's it's probably cost them 30 grand to mimic what you've done just to let you know you might not want to let your secret out oh uh, man you know what at the end of the day it's uh, the whole, it, i tell you what the whole point of the videos on youtube and stuff Mm-hmm. is I want to show people at home, you can do this by yourself. All you need is a camera. All mm-hmm. you, you, you don't need a, a huge lighting group. You know, my mm-hmm. pictures, for instance, like the Instagram picture I did today, I shot all of those pictures myself. That's so me. I go out and do all of them myself. So it's, it's more of, you know, the art form. I know it's an expensive business, but there are ways for you to, enjoy, if you do enjoy music, there are ways for you to do it and build that foundation for when someone comes knocking and wants to put money behind you. Mm-hmm. you know? how, I, how did you get to this point, though, being an independent artist? I mean, did you just learn social media from <laughs> playing with it and trying different things? And then when uh-huh. you started to see the hits and and all that i mean you seem to know exactly what you're talking about yeah yeah so the hard part about we're not on air (laughs) yeah the hard part about the social media thing was was my instagram for instance Uh was built around my golf and the big no-no is is you can buy pages and stuff all day with thousands of followers but as soon as you switch the content the audience dies right so i had to start just out of nowhere started putting music stuff out so i wasn't getting i'm still kind of building the engagement back based off of what my golf content was Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but as far as like the facebook group i got lucky with the facebook group because it's still growing really well Mm -hmm. um but again i was i was at like two thousand followers and all it was was sitting up literally all night long and watching um what's the what's the most famous youtubers doing what are they doing consistently mm-hmm. through those videos? What, mm-hmm. why are their Instagram page is so much bigger than mine? And what I figured out is out of all of the platforms, you've got YouTube, mm-hmm. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, if people are still using Twitter at this point, but <laughs> yeah. there's a way to have them work together and build together. So I can take a video off of uh, YouTube and post it on Facebook, same exact video. Mm-hmm. I could redirect them back to YouTube off of my Facebook. You've got those options, but I can also chop those videos into TikToks and reroute to the big video. So you, you've got different ways to help like mold yeah. them into each other, if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. And anybody that's an independent artist or anybody starting out, this is some great advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can do it yourself. It's going to take a lot of work, but you can do it. It's a lot of work, man. I haven't figured out TikTok. I've had a couple of videos that did really yeah. well. Um, I tell you, the biggest, uh, the big turning point, dude, I was having a, a really bad, really bad week one week, man. Really bad week. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm always about positivity and always looking mm-hmm. um, towards the, the light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how bad a situation gets. Mm-hmm. And, dude, I was just having a rough week. You know, I, I get my stress out at the gym that wouldn't work or anything. And I, I opened up my Instagram and this is no lie, man. I look at, I had posted something like a week before. Okay. This kind of tells you how an algorithm works, by the way, in Instagram. Okay. I posted the video that I had uploaded from TikTok, and it was, um, 
a video with a trending sound and it's I walk up with a cup of coffee and above my head it says what's it like being a girl dad well let me show you and it flashes pictures of me and my daughter I was told not to put the video up it wasn't interesting all of this stuff well I put it up I needed content so I put it up it did decently well on TikTok well <laughs> all of a sudden again this is how the algorithm works it died out not getting anything open up my instagram one day and i had thousands of like likes and views and what had happened was a guy by the name of cowboy Cerrone, the mma fighter literally commented a heart and an american flag he's got like three million followers because he liked it and commented they put me into a whole new algorithm and right. opened up my audience all right of a sudden. That's right. just how it, it works. I got lucky. I mean, it changed my week up, you know, it, it was, it was pretty, it was cool. How just that one little thing, that one day I even sent a message like, man, you just yeah. you completely changed my week, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Now is this, uh, uh, you know, is, do you actually know him or did mm -hmm. it happen to I sleep? don't. Yeah. I do not. Yeah. You know, by him doing that too, shows that you did the right thing and how uh, you yeah. did it. You know, I don't know why, you know, I understand you want to be careful about posting pictures of your daughter and all that. Yeah. I totally get that. But the way you go about it and being, you know, a girl dad, that yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I, I got, so here's what's funny about that video. If you go watch the video, whenever it says, uh, what's it like being a girl dad? Uh -huh. I did get a couple of negative comments. I was like, what, what in the world are they talking about? People were thinking that I was coming out to my parents, letting them know that I transitioned because oh of my hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. So I was like, I was like, look, guys, like the whole concept of a girl dad came from actually Kobe Bryant. Right. Kobe Bryant used to oh, yeah. the yeah. hair and he used to say, hashtag girl dad this. Yeah. I, I love being right. a girl That's dad. That's right. So when he passed away. I was like, man, I've got that. I kind of like that saying. I'm going to keep saying that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you should. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And speaking of your hair, when was the last time you got that cut? Actually, for the right here video, <laughs> <laughs> which was what put out in Oc October, November, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. maybe September. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a while. It was it was about three inches longer, so it's it's shorter now. See, it's longer than Deb's. <laughs> oh, big time! I yeah. just had mine cut, but I still haven't had it that long since probably high school. Mm -hmm. So, but you know what? I, I guess older. Um, guys look better with, look good with longer hair. Does that make any sense? Like someone yeah. my age, long okay. hair is not going to fly anymore. I mean, pretty <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I grew my hair out when I was playing golf originally to donate it. Uh -huh. The reason I grew it out is because I couldn't grow a beard <laughs> and I wanted it. I wanted to be a little bit different. I always kind of had like the shaggy hair, like the beach. Yeah. Boy yeah. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I ended up growing out and then when I started doing music, that's kind of where people are like, oh, yeah, the guy with the long hair. And I mean, that's kind of what I'm recognized as. So I kind of I kept it. So. How long mm -hmm. does it take you to write a song? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it depends. dude. There's I'll, I'll be honest. There's some guys and girls out there that can bust one out in an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit more. I'm different with my process, dude. I I, I don't write unless I'm influence to write i mean it's almost like gambling like if i'm not feeling it that day i'm not gonna mess with right. it but um i've got like chevy and daddy for instance took it took me and bridget tatum about an hour to write that but again you don't realize i had like three other versions of that song already written mm -hmm. so i had a i had one song that she really liked called that old chevrolet it was about my granddad and like talked about his his shop and you know his flag i've actually got his flag right here but talked about like this flag and you know oh all wow that stuff so um, awesome and she's the one that came up she was like man i've been up all night you know I, i've got this hook in my head called chevy and daddy what do you think and we ended up knocking that out in like an hour hour and a half but there's been some times where i've sat there for like four or five hours with people mm -hmm. And, you know, you're you're hitting right where you want, but you just, you know, it can be that much better. So it's just, it's one of those things, man. You just sit back and yeah. enjoy the ride while you do it. 
I know Deb and I have talked to so many different artists and songwriters, and mm-hmm. you know we've heard both sides of it. Some uh, some of the big songs have been written in uh, in a half hour or, or an hour. Mm-hmm. And there's other ones. It's like no, we just had to get up and walk away. Yeah. Back another day. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I get that, uh, it pretty much just goes with what the vibe is is doing. Yeah. It's, you know, whether or not you can make it work, you got to be in the right yeah. frame of mind. And I would, uh, I know we've uh, talked to Deb, we've, her and I, we've talked to uh, different songwriters that have done the Zoom thing. And uh, Deb could tell you that it just wasn't working for them. Right, Deb? Right. Yeah, they prefer to be in the room with the group and feel the emotion and the feeling and yeah. things just seem to come about when you're in person together. It's just more personalized. Yeah. I was actually telling somebody that last night. They, we were talking about doing a... Uh, I'm, I'm doing a subscriber thing on YouTube where um, the 10,000, I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could actually see who had subscribed to your channel. And I got this idea from the guy called Mr. Beast, if you've ever watched his videos. <laughs> no, and he, no, he does, yeah, he does giveaways like this for like the certain number of person gets this prize. And I was like, man, that'd be cool. You know what? Why don't I just do a Zoom concert for that 10,000 subscriber? So I'm waiting. We're we're like 50 followers away or subs away from it. So as soon as that hits, I'll. Yeah, it's it. awesome. Yeah. So. Gee, I yeah. like that idea. I know. I need to steal that. <laughs> yeah. the wheels yeah. are turning. The wheels mm-hmm. are turning right now. They're turning. See, hey, mm-hmm. man, you got to think outside the box in this industry. Mm-hmm. You got to. Yeah, and you're doing that very well. I mean, already, you know, we've been talking for close to almost a half hour now. And uh, I tell you, you've been outside the box the whole time and some great great ideas. And the whole time, you know, Deb is a businesswoman and she's got like five businesses here, plus in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I can see her mind is turning. I'm just always turning. I'm I'm taking notes. You guys don't realize it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you know what's great is um, it's a second, it's, it will become second nature for you. And Mm -hmm. that could end up being a little side gig as well as the music business because mm-hmm. I'm thinking on the aspect of there's so many new artists that are trying to break ground and they just don't always know where to go, what direction. And if your name gets out there and you start giving them advice and on how they can move up into that yeah. industry, that will also take you. Cause a lot of artists do have some sort of side business going yeah. it could be cooking. It could be, you know, athletic wear, it could be, social media i mean there's mm-hmm. so many other options that you find that yeah. you, you know what really bothers me is like at the end of the day this especially with this it, it, this is more of a community um mm-hmm. and it really it really bugs me when independent artists don't help each other out mm-hmm. and the reason i say that is because if you pay attention um this is i don't know if, yeah i think that was my phone if you pay attention um Go look at any artist post, any post on mm-hmm. any social media, and I'll give Instagram for example. Go look at Chris Jansen, for instance. Okay. Um, and I mean, this is a hundred percent fact on what happens. Uh, you remember what I just said about the MMA fighter? It throws me into right. a different algorithm, right? Yes. Who runs Chris Jansen's team or his socials? The people at Warner Music, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if they're running his they're also running every other artist within that organization. So go look and see who's commenting on each post. Everyone that's signed to that label comments on each other's post and they like each other's post. And, and it grows. It just takes right. it. They work together and it's a great concept. And I think that that's one thing that, that if independent artists, if you got a good group of 20 people, they don't even have to be famous. Mm-hmm. Um, look at the 615 house with TikTok. Yeah, they're they're okay. a group of people that are working together, doing content together, and they have a team that that helps push each other, and that's mm-hmm. that's a great thing to have, you know. Come to check that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have not been, I haven't like officially been on TikTok. I've seen it through my kids' phones and so forth. Man, I have mixed different. emotions about <laughs> trying it's to different. figure it out. <laughs> It's different. It's uh, I've had, like I said, I've had a couple of videos that did really well, mm-hmm. um, but most of the stuff I've seen it and like guys with their shirts off or girls dancing provocatively and right. 
right. uh, you know, I'm not I'm not that great of a dancer, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I won't be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's go back to your songwriting a, a little bit. Uh, yeah, where, do you, yeah. where do you get most of your your inspiration? Uh, uh, songs? I, I've had so many people ask this, um, and it, I'll, I'll give you a weird example of where I got asked this. Okay. I'll, I, I go back and work with my dad a lot. Okay. Um, and I might, I might help him on like a really small job or I've helped him at like a battery acid plant to the point where a lot of those workers, um, knew who I was, enjoyed my music, were fans of my music. And they would ask, why do you come back and do this? Well, first off, I, I don't mind making money, you know, that's first and foremost, but Absolutely. Dude, I literally walk around with my phone and write stories about the guys and the girls that are walking by like that's huh. that's yeah. what i grew up around we've got sunoco which is a paper product plant one of the biggest in the world back home we've got the power plant um dom tar is another place that i've worked at we've got all of these mills and i mean i would say 90 percent of my friends followed their parents footsteps and work at one of those places almost and that's what we grew up around so that's where you know you you see a lot of people talking about farms. Well, I didn't grow up on a farm, so I don't really talk a whole lot about farms. Mm -hmm. um, but you do hear me uh, try to insinuate certain aspects of, of working in almost every single one of my songs. Now, what what uh, what is it that your dad does? He's an electrician, but he okay. used to work for uh, Sunoco Products. Again, that the paper okay. plant. Yeah, the Sunoco around here is uh, oil. It's gasoline. Yeah, and, you know. So this one's this one's S O N O C O. Give them, yeah. give them, maybe they'll send me a check for the shout out. There you <laughs> um, go. The, uh, Always yeah. thinking about money. See, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's yeah. a business person. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the, one of the biggest uh, packaging plants in the entire world from what i understand and they uh for instance like um lays the lays canisters yes they make those you know oh, the wow. big, you remember the big uh like sono tubes that you yep. can stand on and like walk yep. on and so yep yep don't they use those for like concrete or something mm -hmm. you put them in the ground and they they yeah. make all of those tubes oh wow so yeah, yeah. that's what uh yeah, my, my they just said my daughter's watching. So hey Huntley. Hey, well, I was just gonna say I just saw that pop up mm -hmm. and uh, Tony Neely says, uh, I hear you, AJ. Uh Kendall. Yeah, Tony. Hey, like, so funny funny story. Yeah, Kendall Skinner's another artist from back home. Hey June oh. and, and Brent, what's up? So cool. Funny okay. story on, about Tony. Okay. Um, Tony Neely worked at um uh Johnson Control, which was the battery acid plant, right? Okay. And uh, when I had moved up here, he was talking about coming and watching some MMA fights. I didn't know that he used to um, do MMA. Mm -hmm. And I think it came up to the Diaz McGregor fight. And he, he posted a picture of him and Diaz where they used to work out together. No way. Yeah. I was like, man, like, come on, dude. You, yeah. You're over here hiding. Uh the MMA, I'm trying to think. Um I do not watch it, but uh my wife's nephew, I don't know if you know Dave Mira. Uh he was a BMX bike rider, yeah, but yeah. fighting. Uh he did a little bit of everything. He was in motocross, he did um not motocross, but uh uh on the rally cars mm -hmm. type of thing too. He did a lot of that, but he got into the fighting thing. Uh we've lost him now, but um yeah, you know, um he was big into that. I don't know if that was MMA or not. I don't know. UFC, UFC. Yeah, maybe that's, that, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Really on that bandwagon, yeah. but totally, totally get it. Um, you watch a lot of the MMA? I do, man. I yeah. I grew up a, a big boxing fan. So one thing that I did when I was like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, I used to take boxing to uh, increase my, my hand speed for pitching mm -hmm. whenever I used to mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. baseball. Yeah. Um, and that was before UFC was around. So, you know, we were huge Mike Tyson and, and Ali fans and stuff. I mean, okay. I still watch the reruns, but um, a buddy of mine, I don't think he's on here. Will Newsom um, is really big in the MMA, man. He's a, he's a great fighter. I've been to some of his fights and I, I did a couple classes with him. Let me tell you something. That's, <laughs> that is a different sport. That is a tough sport. 100 percent that's yeah 
I, I don't know. I, I wow. Mm-hmm. I, I can't see me doing that, but I could see you doing that. I mean, obviously your arms are the size of my legs. So <laughs> all the power to you. And how often do you go to the gym? How often do you work out? Every day. Every day. You may mm-hmm. it's part of your daily routine is to get your ass to the gym and you got Yeah, it. man. I tell you what, you know, the the I went through a tough time again whenever, you know, I had the divorce was going on and the uh the uh pandemic the gym was closed. So one thing I've always done was when it, when it came down to golf or anything, the gym was where I let my stress out. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, and that's a really big positive thing for me because, you know, I can go in there and feel refreshed. Um, you know, I don't like to argue or anything, anything like that. And so I ended up having a tough time figuring out what to do. And I ended up buying some bands, which they're all broken now. That I've got to buy some new ones. I've, yeah. I've got bands, so uh, I, I do a lot of workouts at home. When I have my daughter, she if you've seen some of the pictures, she works out with me here and there. That's so awesome. Um, but, dude, I lost, like, I want to say 20 pounds. You weren't heavy in the first place. Dude, if I, I was, remember correctly, when I met you, I think it uh, when we had you over here, it was, uh, I mean, I was probably 200 being overweight. Yeah, I was probably 200. And dude, I go through these weird phases, man. Um, hey, Carla. Hey, Aunt Terry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got the fam on board. Yeah, like- yeah. Um, I, uh, I went through a weird phase and I always, I've always done weird stuff like this. Like I did a no carb diet once just to see mm-hmm. what effect it had on my body. Um, I've done like really hard bulking diets to see what would happen. And I just, I, I said, I've got to figure out a way to deal with this stress while I'm at the house, you know? So Mm -hmm. I ended up um, to save money for like a month straight. This is no lie. My parents actually got on me about it, but I ate nothing but hamburger meat, just straight hamburger. I would cook like a pound worth of hamburger meat and then I would cook pasta. And it was, it was because I mean, I didn't have hardly any money. All my, my revenue from the road was gone. Yeah. So um, I ended up losing like 20 pounds. I've, I've put on about 15 pounds again mm-hmm. since then. Like I've been able to lift heavier and stuff. But dude, it was. A hamburger and the pasta and you lost weight? It yeah. Is, yeah. Right, dude, if I'm wrong, doesn't pasta usually do just the opposite? Nah. Deb? Uh, Deb's Italian. She might be able to help. Uh, so, wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird concept. So this is the weird thing about diets. And if anyone's watching, you can hound me if you want to, if you've got a different belief, but this is based off of my personal experience with what I've done. Okay. What I noticed was it does not matter what you eat to a certain extent. Now our bodies are different. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Um, one of the major factors in weight gain is sugar. Okay. First and foremost, I got the, you got muscle. I'm right. So the, the major contributing factor to all of that when it comes down to weight is the calories. So when I say the calories, would you think it's healthier to have a donut or a salad? Depends. It depends, though, because if there's a lot of sugar things going so, into your salad, that right, salad so is really not. that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if I make a salad. I put olives and onions and cheese oh. and a bunch of dressing. So I have a thousand calorie salad or right. for a snack, I could have had a 70 calorie donut. So when I changed everything from going, okay, well, I've got mm-hmm. to have this much protein, this much, this many mm-hmm. carbohydrates. And, you know, I, I watched my sugar intake, mm-hmm. but I kept a limit on about where I wanted my calories. So at the end of the night, if I wanted to go have, 10 Oreo cookies, if I was still under my calorie goal, I could have those 10 cookies and I still lost weight overall through the day. Wow. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> well, like I said, it's, it's a whole thing where everyone's body's different. Don't yeah, wrong, no, no, but doubt. Just, no doubt. But I, I do know for a fact, if you can stick around your calories, you mm-hmm. can have Mm-hmm. a few more cheat meals than you think if you strategically do them right. Yeah, you know? like that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very, very big on the no sugar. I mm-hmm. I have as little sugar as possible in my yeah, same here. lifestyle of eating. And I just had mm-hmm. to make it a lifestyle. So, but it's hard. It's very, very, it very is. hard to get into that routine. Mm-hmm. So, it is. But being on a diet like that and the no sugar 
I mean, definitely has to make you feel better. And you got to feel good to be a good artist. And uh, you're it doing takes time, great. but yeah. It yeah, does, I mean, just mentally, you want to be able to wake up and feel good about yourself, not like, oh, God, I'm fat, my stomach aches, I got a headache. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm describing myself. Right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> So, but, question, are you, with your workout routine and your eating lifestyle or your performances on stage, are you more of one to be bouncing around and running around on the stage or do you stay a little bit more quiet and stationary in a certain zone area? Um, I, the last show I did, I didn't get to bounce around as much when we full band acoustic, you know, it's just, you're kind of in one spot, right. but full yeah. band wise, mm -hmm. I didn't get to move around quite as much as I want. Um, I had some in ear trouble, so I had to Ooh. stick to one oh, little yeah. spot, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. at, at one point. But I, dude, I like moving around, man. Um, at the end of it, you know, you look at the performers and it's just crazy to me that more people aren't following the footsteps in our generation, mm -hmm. in our niche, which is country music. Why aren't people doing these full on shows like uh, um, Garth Brooks? I haven't seen yeah. a, a guy get on a swing and take off into the crowd, you know, like, <laughs> no, no. I mean, so I, I really, I really watch a lot of, of what he does on stage. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't realize this, but hand gestures and your facial movements, not necessarily like facial features, but the movements tell an audience how to react and people don't realize oh, that's a brain game. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And how artists can get on stage. And uh, I use Reba McIntyre as an example. Big, I'm a big fan. Yeah. And, um, you swear that she's looking at you. She makes it. And she may not be looking at you, but it, every if you look, it's like, oh, my God, she's looking at you. Exactly. If an artist mm -hmm. can do that, you know, everybody, you're making that eye contact or yeah. it's that feeling with those in your audience and you make that connection mm -hmm. and it just, it, you know, makes that connection between you and your right. eye even, even bigger. So, yeah, there was a, uh, do you remember when Garth Brooks did the, uh, it's back when the audience network was around, but he did live at Yankee stadium before mm -hmm. they took the old stadium down. Yes. If you go back and watch that, I had, uh, I recorded it when I first moved to Nashville and dude, I bet I watched that thing 10 times a day and just watched exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily for my, my performance with a band, but for my songwriting performance. And mm -hmm. at the very end, I'd never heard this song before and why I have no clue. Um, but, uh, at the very end, he comes back out and he does standing outside the fire and leaves. Mm -hmm. He comes back out with just a guitar and this is how crazy like my mind thinks of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. He comes back out and he's like, oh man, I could do this all night. And he's kind of strumming the guitar and he stops. And when he stops, he looks up to the right, like he's thinking. Now what people don't realize is mentally what that tells the viewer is he's thinking of something very close to his heart. So he's about to tell me a story. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he looks down, he smiles and doesn't look at the audience. And he goes, it's sun and rain, it's fire and ice. And then he looks out. And when he does that, I went, dude, he could have done that in front of a fireplace with two mm -hmm. people. And it would be the same effect yes. as those 80,000 people. That is crazy. Big. Man. Damn. I love how you analyze. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know, here's another thing. If you want to sneak peek it a song coming out soon i hope go watch the right here video okay well um i think i did watch that earlier i mean i yeah i had it on my phone and i was playing it mm -hmm. listen to the radio in the truck before the song starts okay oh, okay mm -hmm. oh there's a little inside info mm -hmm. well dude you got okay. to think man uh okay. why do why do so many uh artists they write in the same keys Mm -hmm. which isn't a bad thing but what you don't realize as a viewer or a listener is if something sounds familiar you're more likely to listen mm -hmm. so you know one of my ideas was hey man i kind of want to put this song at the front of the video so that it at least is in some people's heads man like they'll hear the song eventually and go oh man where did i hear that at oh wait it was in the beginning of that video mm -hmm. the whole time 
What a uh-huh. great idea. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it, the way you, like Deb said, the way you analyze everything is just amazing. And mm-hmm. how you, you, you look beyond what is actually in front of you. I have to, dude. Yeah. To. And, uh, but yet, you are still unique in your own way. Even though mm-hmm. you watch people like Garth and the way they act on stage and yeah. other artists as well. But you give it your own, right? You mm-hmm. give it your own unique feel. So it's mm-hmm. never, it's, you don't want to be like any of those artists, right? Like they've got their own thing going and you've got, uh, you know, the AJ Sanders thing going, mm-hmm. so, but, but yet by analyzing, you know, you got a good idea what you want to do. Mm-hmm. If that makes know, sense, I don't. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like I, I tell you, um, so last week was the first week I did my blog, my mm-hmm. first blog. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I was saying, you know, for people that, that don't follow me, this is who I am. And you know, here is my idea for doing this. And the whole idea for doing it was, you know, I do kind of have a niche with Chevrolet trucks and and trucks Mm -hmm. in general because of that song. Well, I'm having people contact me now because of what I said. Hey, I, you know, when I don't have my daughter, I do have free time to do stuff. Let me know where some car shows are. I'd love Mm -hmm. to come out and do a vlog there. I would love to um, go see a state park or drop by a restaurant that you guys might tell me to, to go check out you know, within driving distance, or if I'm on the way back from South Carolina, I could go, mm-hmm. I could shoot 30 minute video and cut it right. into an eight minute segment, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like venturing out a little bit outside of music, but trying to stay along the lines of the music. If that makes exactly. sense. Yeah. I might come to you for some training. Yeah. Uh, hey, anytime, <laughs> anytime. I'm, I'm actually, uh, there's a, uh, an influencer, um, that I'm in contact with now and we're, we're starting to partner up on some stuff, but I was actually explaining the same thing to her. I was like, you know, mm-hmm. with, with a couple tweaks, you know, you could really be building a huge audience and it's just minor little things that you have to do that people wouldn't even recognize. And it's, it just it helps everything flow together. I am totally captivated with everything mm-hmm. you're saying here today. I'm <laughs> like, this is been, you know, usually we're doing the interview and, and all that we go through, but you have definitely, yeah. I think, blown both of us away mm-hmm. with, with some great information. And I hope because this podcast gets posted to YouTube as well, and mm-hmm. of course we're live on Facebook right now. And we got some watch parties going. But if we have another artist that's watching this, or an independent artist, or maybe somebody local that you know follows me, and uh, you know they know I talk to the artist, mm-hmm. some great, great information for these people coming mm-hmm. from somebody like you who is. You're living your dream. You're in Nashville. You're doing what you have to do. You're a family mm-hmm. man. You're, you know, you've got all that going, and you're doing it right. Everything mm-hmm. I see is just, you know, you seem to have your faith in place. You seem to have, you know, the fact that you're just. And I'll say it again, a great dad. And and I know what it's like to to go through what you're going through. Been there, done that, my friend. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. But you know, you know I tell a lot of people like you, you got to look at it this way. There's so much negativity going on right now, and I do. I got in a huge argument with a friend last night. God bless his soul. If you're you're out there, you know who I'm talking about. But <laughs> we got in an argument last night over politics, and I said, yep. you know, I, it. At the end of the day, I, the way I look at the po- political side is, I'm an artist. I'm not a political influencer. Please right. do not look at at my stuff and and want to do politics. I want to be your escape from mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And I also, mm-hmm. within myself, want to be an escape from that. So, dude, if it's money. I do not care about money. I don't have all the money in the world. You know, I, I'm right. struggling just like everybody else is. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, dude, there's so much negativity going on. You have to find a positive thing to look forward to. And, you know, my positive thing right now is trying to help people along the way while just having fun doing it. Man. Yeah, I had a, um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that last night. I had a buddy of mine, uh, one of my best friends, mm-hmm. uh, next to me and just kind of, uh, you know, telling me how I should be, what I should be believing in and thinking and all that. And I, just yeah. said, I said, dude, you know, let's, I don't want anything to come between our friendship. Okay. Exactly. So, exactly. So just, you know, I, I respect you for who you are and we're very good friends and I want to keep it that way. And so please just, you know, yeah. stop. And you know, the one thing that, the uh, one thing that I'll say, and this will probably be the only political thing you ever hear me say, um, is the the thing that I said last night was I was asked, did I not think that there was chaos 
last Wednesday. Oh, my God. Are you talking to the same guy? I got that exact same question last night. Well, my response to that was, you know, I was always taught, thank God to my parents, that it's rude for one to ask who you voted for or talk about who you voted for. So I never ask people. I don't care. I can get an idea Mm -hmm. from it, from what you say. But my response to that question was, yeah, I saw chaos Wednesday, and I also saw chaos for months where they were burning my freaking town down yeah. And I'm worried about keeping my daughter safe. I mean, right, right. so at the end of the day, and it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> like, right. That, that's the crazy thing. So I just told him last night, I was like, dude, like, you know, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, we are friends and there's no reason we should ever get, right. Right. get into an yeah. argument over people we don't even know. Right. I, I don't agree. personally know those people. I, like, that's come right. on, man. You know? Yeah. So, uh, AJ, you know what? I mean, tonight has been just a, just a great, great uh, conversation. And I've some, enjoyed it. You know, yeah, me too. And uh, I can tell Deb's got a smile on her face because, like I said, she's the businesswoman and mm-hmm. she's thinking about everything that you said. I can mm-hmm. see her mind turning and going, yeah. And when we get done here tonight, she's going to go, Skip, did you listen to what he was saying? Hey, I will, I'll stay on after this and talk to you all if you want to. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, that, definitely. Cool. But um, if somebody wanted to get a hold of your music, or find out more about you, uh, what avenue do they take? Um, well, you can go to my website, ajsanderscountry.com. Um, okay. The email on there is not working, so I've got to figure that out. But okay. um, I'm on every single platform, uh, whether it's Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. I'm on Deezer. I didn't even know I was on Deezer. but <laughs> um, And all of my social media is, uh, you know, Facebook's AJ Sanders, um, Instagram is AJ Sanders Official and uh youtube aj sanders so just type in my name you'll see the long hair (laughs) (laughs) i love it brother you've been great tonight i know we we've been going for quite a bit here and uh, but it's been a lot of great Mm -hmm. great information and um like i said this will be posted on youtube and i see we got a lot of friends uh, over there that have been commenting all night if they want to uh just subscribe to skip happens and uh and of course by all means yeah yeah and uh, keep in touch with the artists that we talk to and uh, of course you know this will be up there but uh, you know we just want to take a moment to thank you for joining us here tonight and uh, i don't want to keep you too much longer here because uh, i do want to comment by the way on that flag in the background there i think uh, that that is the coolest thing. I think I told mm-hmm. you before we went on, before we turned the mics on here tonight, and uh, uh, I've already texted Deb to buy me one for my birthday. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know what's funny is so so the lights right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The reason I bought this first off, my daughter can touch the button and, and change it. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. so she likes that. But the reason I bought that again to do with social media, you get more hits and views if you have something like that going on. So I. I specifically did that to have in my background. <laughs> that was the whole point of doing it. I, I'm going to watch this entire interview back and I'm going to be making notes left and right. Mm-hmm. Hey, did I, um, when you were here about a year ago, did you get a Skip Happens mug? Mm-hmm. Uh, coffee mug? I don't think no. I did. I don't know if you had them then, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, when you first started mm-hmm. out. Well, when we get done here tonight, I'll get some info for me. I'd like to send uh, one of my Skip mm-hmm. Happens podcast mugs to you. Yeah, for sure, man. Either get a cocktail or your coffee or whatever you want in it. So, uh-huh. so. All, right. all right, AJ Sanders, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so, so much for joining Deb and I and uh, Skip Heaven's podcast. And, of course, Deb with the official Country Music Fan Club. And, Deb, you want to give a little plug about your page and all that for all our viewers? Right? Please do follow us at the Country Music Fan Club on Facebook or on Instagram. And we'd love to, we're following you now, AJ. So if you get a chance, no, uh, like us back and we'll make sure we get everything you have out there, especially when you get out on the road. We'd love to uh, promote that. And actually, yeah. do you ever, we, we forgot to hit this topic. Have you ever been up in this area? This next, I mean, actually you were there on a radio tour, but have you performed mm-hmm. up here at all? I played in... Watertown, New York, I believe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Probably was Stan, my buddy Stan. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I okay. actually flew right. all the way back up to do that show. And um, here's what's crazy about that. So at the end of um, Chevy and Daddy, I've I've had a couple of times where I I like cover my eyes or like close my eyes, like it, especially the last part mm-hmm. of the song when I reveal, you know, my the father figure or my granddad mm-hmm. at the time had passed away. Um, so I actually got a message and I, I wish I could remember this guy's name. Um, they have a video that I've never been sent 
they won't they haven't sent me the video of it but when i sang the song i introduced uh as a tribute to this guy this fan and by the way fans i do read everything you send me so um this fan had said that he his father had passed away that day and that the song was helping him cope with it even though it had just happened you know he really appreciated it a lot. well i introduced the song by shouting this guy out and oh. dude i had a full on like two minutes i couldn't stop crying oh, really i, I, oh, I wow. couldn't start the song yeah wow. I, had to, I think um i don't know if jesse's gonna watch this but um That's jesse jesse yeah. uh lynn oh, oh. Yeah, jessica lynn yeah, she. Yes. Uh, yep. She um. She's, love the, she's from Bama, right? Yeah. Um. Oh, Jesse Lynn is from Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Lynn. Yeah, so, there's also a Jessica Lynn is who's from the Southern Tier here in New York. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. Jesse Lynn. So Jesse, Jesse Lynn. Lynn was yes. playing the show with me, and she actually had to kind of stand in and, and talk a little bit so I could gather myself. Oh, and she dear. was like, and she was like, oh, it's okay, AJ. You're just, you're showing how much of a real man you are. I'm like, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, oh, that's, that's, that's great, though. Yeah. You touch the hearts like that, and it, mm -hmm. it just, it's remarkable. Yeah, dude. It's, it's not depressing to get stuff like that, but it's it's really, it's cool, but at the same time, it's really yeah. tough to do yeah. this. That's the type of stuff I get sent, man. That's just a lot of sentimental stuff, which is great. But man, it's it's hard to talk to people about stuff like that when they've lost someone, you know. Oh, I know. Wow, mm -hmm. it is well, very hard. But uh, that just mm -hmm. you know shows what uh, the effect of a good artist and uh, that's some, what I was just gonna say. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. you have quite an effect on them, and they really look up to you, and they really yeah. feel that you're gonna feel for them. And again, mm -hmm. I mean, that builds a solid fan base. They just mm -hmm. feel that personal connection there. Yeah. It's all so. about having that foundation, man. That, that mm -hmm. foundation, if you get it built right, it won't leave no matter how good or bad it's going to get. It's always going right. to stick there, you know? Right. Right. Hey, best brother. We love you, man. I'll tell you, this is this has been a great, uh, just a great uh, conversation here tonight with Skip Happens and along with Deb from the official Country Music Fan Club. Just uh, some great information. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you watch who, if you watch this down the road, uh, definitely uh, listen to what AJ has to say. If you're mm -hmm. interested in uh, maybe following his career path and maybe pursuing your dream in music, he's got some great advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, most importantly, that what you talked about with social media and the algorithms and all that stuff, that's, that's what we need to know. And, and I tell you, that's the way it's going right now. And you got to do it right. It's a crazy science, man. Yeah. It's a crazy science, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know we got the pandemic going on, but hopefully uh, soon we can get back to Nashville. We can uh, maybe get ourselves uh, maybe a cocktail and listen to some music. And uh, yeah, Deb's out there great. quite often, as she has mm -hmm. a son that lives out there, and uh, Deb's got some business there, so mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So uh, AJ Sanders, you're the best. We love you, brother. Let's keep in touch. And yeah, uh, sure, man. Yeah, thanks for joining us here on Skip Happens yeah, tonight. Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. All right, peace out, brother. We'll see y'all soon. Yes, sir.